Okay, firstly, it doesn't matter if the goal is way too big. If you're already urinating in the urinal, you might as well aim for the fly, right? We already have a million people making 3D models. All we have to do is build a target so that some of them will land in a useful place. This is basic economics. It's just like when Michigan gave a 10 cent return for recycling plastic bottles and glass bottles. Then even the homeless guy finds something to do because there's bottles on the ground. He picks them up, moves it one step closer. So we add some defining qualities, but we also instruct on how to achieve those qualities. For example, a 3D model becomes a printable 3D model by following some rules. And I establish those rules for myself. I've been making functional parts for a decade and nearly a decade with no CNC machine. And it's turning out really possible. I made some massive breakthroughs such as, such as discovering the adhesives that will make two printed parts as strong as if they were made as one, which unlocks half of all the limitations of printability. Then we think ahead to the system, like a robot. It's a machine that's fully functional and it's based on these same elemental components. If we constrain the parts down to a set of rules, which I did to produce this kind of design, can it be viable? Can we transmit the knowledge and the, the data across the world to be able to produce it in multiple locations? Yeah. So I've been making a growing collection of printable parts for students to perturbate in any way that they want to produce parts, create machines that are add-ons for that robot. And then as I'm making examples, it's starting to feel like I'm barely designing anymore. Some models are taking 10% of the time because I'm copying and pasting features. And so it's like, am I reaching a, a space where three quarters of the effort has been reformulated into a method and it's not really effort? Yes, I am reaching that space and I'm writing down these rules and I'm discovering that they're actually simple enough to transmit to a high schooler. This laboratory is probably the 10th laboratory I've built in the world and it's been a testing bed for can I achieve all of the creation of stuff that I need that's functional inside this space with a reducing amount of off-the-shelf parts and an expanding amount of possibilities? The answer is yes. So I'm adding more constraints and I'm limiting the types of materials that are getting involved and I'm narrowing down this rule list basically and I'm finding expanding possibilities and so that's sending me in a direction. Something I learned globally is that Americans treat the learning effort and building effort as two completely separate activities and it doesn't have to be that way as they know in many other places.